So we'll be getting underway shortly with our first event, the Mick 4x400 meters. Perfect event to kick off our day European under 20 clubs meet today. And event bodies. What DNA is about the team aspect. But unlike a traditional 4 by 400 meters, we do have certain changes that give it that extra DNA sparkle, those nuances that we only see in this format. So all the athletes, so all the athletes who will be racing in their 4 by 400 meter mixed relay teams, the, the position that is set, the only start position that is set is the first we go off after that team manager has an opportunity to switch around the order of the athletes if he feels like the team has a specific advantage if he's known any tactical weaknesses amongst the other teams he can use them to his advantage or her advantage and play that card where he sw they swap the order of the athletes around unlike we see so frequently out on the circuit out the championship when we have mixed relays the order isn't this isn't looking down the order not all the clubs have gone for the same format same starting format so we will nice mix there which then does play into this tactical side we might see more disparity in that first two four four hundred meters that might lead to a change later down the line it might lead to a switch of athletes but it is the Andorra national team that go in lane two and Arcasus go in lane three LV go in lane four Blackheath and Bromley in five AK go to Pleasant in six and Plaza Castle on the home team the home club the host for the next two to go in the outside lane
Cuando me avisen yo te hago la cuenta atrás con la mano, ¿vale? Publicidad, sí. Gracias. Un minuto. Cinco segundos. Cinco, cuatro. Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to Spain. Welcome to Castillo and welcome to a very special competition. This is not your regular international hoops competition. This is dynamic and this is new. This is the dynamic new athletics DNA. And it's different because here athletes and teams have to do a little bit more to become the European champions in the throws and in the jumps. For example, athletes will do each other to see who can fight for the maximum score for the 12 points. They will see who can fight for the medium score for the six points or who can fight for the lowest score for the four points. We're starting in one minute, but that won't be enough. Getting the highest score isn't just enough because it all comes down to the final event. It all comes down to what we like to call the hunt, the final medley relay in which every point the teams have achieved during the competition will be translated into seconds of advantage in that medley really the winner of the hunt will become the winner the european under 20 champion of this dna athletics we are starting in a minute with the first event with the 400 meter mixed relay we are in the first match tomorrow we will have the finals but today right now we have six teams the national champions from Spain, from Great Britain, from the Czech Republic, from Norway, from Switzerland, and a national team from our neighbor country, from Andorra. Right off the bat, we're starting with the uh, relay, with the 400 meter relay, and this is quite simple. The winner gets the first 12 points in this DNA under 20 European competition. Muy bien. qualify for an A and B final tomorrow. Each session is fast, furious, and all of some of the best talent from across Europe. First, second, and third in each semi-final, progressing through to an A, fourth, fifth, and sixth into a B final in place tomorrow. Shortly getting underway with the first event, the mixed four by 400 meter relay, an event that pretty much embodies everything that DNA is about. And of course, as it is DNA, this new exciting format, there is a bit of an extra twist. The athletes and the team declared who will be starting each of the legs. But then after that, the team managers have the opportunity to switch the up, change the order of the athletes if they'd like. So, in the first match today, Black and Bromley from the UK, AK Skoda Pleasant from the Czech Republic, Oslo and Arcasus from Norway, TLV from Switzerland, Pliers, the national the host team here in Spain and Andorra over a national team. And the lane draw for this first event, the four by 400 meter head, four by 400 meter mixed relay. Andorra, the national team go in lane two. Oslo and Arcasus, you can see them in the Norwegian kit, they go in lane three. Skoda Pleds in there, in lane six.
in lane five, Blackheath and Bromley being led out by Cameron Kelly Gordon. TVL in their Swiss kit. Oslo and Arcasus, you can see there in the Norwegian national kit. And Andorra national team going in lane two. So the host team, Players de Cassillon, go in lane seven. AK Skoda Pleasant in lane six. Blackheath and Bromley in lane five. TVL in lane four. Oslo and Arcasus in lane three. And Andorra in lane two. And you can see the other athletes there at the side of the track. As we mentioned earlier, there is a bit of a DNA sparkle, a bit of DNA mix in this four by 400 meter mixed relay. The teams having the opportunity to switch around the athletes if they feel they can gain edge. So we're underway here at our first of four DNA under two clubs meets here in Cassiopeia. And it's a great start for AK Skoda. Pleasant in lane six. Jan Smara leading them out exceptionally well at the minute. Ozo and Arcasus not far behind. It's AK Skoda, who is their lead out athlete, comes into the, the final 100 meters of his first leg will have the big advantage over the team running in the Norwegian national kit behind them, TVL, the Swiss team coming through strongly. And at the first changeover, it is AK Skoda Pleasant in the lead. Not far behind though, is Oslo and Arcasus wearing that Norwegian kit. So the athletes taking the break down the back straight on this second leg and it is the normal team that move into the lead followed closely by AK Skoda Pleasant and there'll be a, a bit of a battle into his home street AK Skoda Pleasant Moving around the outside of the Norwegian team. And Blackheath and Bromney now a brilliant second leg. And it is very close between these first three. Great start of this third leg for the Norway team. Aidan Vincent putting a significant amount of dents between him and the two female athletes behind him. We see Oslo and Arcasus go back of the lead. It's chopped and changed as we've seen the order of the female athletes and male athletes go back and forth. And it is the Norwegian team, Oslo and Arcasus, who coming into this final leg have a big, big advantage. Aidan Vincent hands over to Camilla Dahl Christensen and she's off and away. Behind her, AK Skoda Pleasant. Radrek Kubri chasing down the athlete ahead and behind him in pursuit, Pablo Simaroca from Blackheath and Bromley. They're in pursuit, Norwegian team currently out in front and they are fast approaching Blackheath and Bromley now moving the way up into second around that last 200 meters there's going to be a big chase on here does the Norwegian have what it takes to see this out to the end Black and Bromley coming through incredibly strongly to the delight of their team members down by the side of the track the last 50 meters is Blackheath and Bromley Pablo Soccer who will take 
the win in that final leg. Blackheath and Bromley, they take first blood. The full 12 points to the English team. And how close was that down that final last two meters? So rarely out on the circuit do we see the differences and the nuances of this kind of racing. So really we see teams and clubs putting the same order out as competitors. We didn't see that today. But it was Blackheath and Bromley who take the first 12 points of the first of our four DM European under 20 club matches taking place. Castellon over the next two days and what an exciting start what a charge that was around the last 400 meters last leg Norwegian team just hanging on for second and it was always going to be tough for Camilla Dahl Christiansen she did have a big lead her team gave her that she could have done into that last leg, but being chased down by two exceptionally strong athletes behind. The host team there getting their photo, you can see green flies to Cassion. But what a way to start our competition. First of four sessions over the course of two days. Finals leading to an A and B final and every point counts. Three thirty four time for Blackheath and Bromley and if that race if that opening race is anything to go by we are in for an exciting few days of racing here in Castillon confirmation of those results there from our first event And there are the standings at the first event as well. Blackheath and Bron course taking all 12 points. And it's the first three from each of these semi-finals. So we will go through the first ones to, to the A final. 12 points after this 400 meter relay. But now the thing gets trickier. This is DNA Athletics. And we are about to start the shot put, the next event. And this is when we are going to have the six athletes battling themselves in duels. And then in a final round, we will see which two athletes can battle for the 12 or 10 points, which two athletes can battle for the eight or six points. And who are the two athletes that will be trying to get the lowest uh, points possible, the four or two points. This is dynamic new athletics. So as Alberto explained there, we are on to our first field event of the competition. Four field events, seven track events before we go to the hunt, our five event. So the four, four these field events, it is a head-to-head -head round robin to start with. It's Thomas Prohaska. Let's go to Pleasant. He's 
He gets us underway. He has the best personal best in this field. 18 metres and 24. Set this season. He's in great form. Well, he shakes his head a little bit there. 15 23 for his first throw. So they only get one throw each in these head to heads. As Joel Bengeli steps up, representing the Swiss team TVL. And even though Thomas Pahaska looked slightly disappointed with his throw, it does look like it, that will be enough to see him take all three spikes in that, that first head-to-head. who takes the win all three spikes in that first head-to-head -head. three spikes to a win one point for a draw and no spikes for a loss as you see the black and Bromley athlete oh, happy with his opening throw <laughs> Yeah, you can see why Dylan Clayden is very, very happy with that. Just shy of his personal back. Also set this season. He's up against the home Matthew. Navi Hughes. And that close indeed. And Crew just takes the win in that dead 15 19 for Flanders Castillo. After this round, Robin, the spikes added up, and that then determines who will go head to head for the point in the final round. Joel Bengeli of TVL stepping up again for his second throw. Shy of 14 metres. In this head-to-head, -head, he's up against Stenson Aspen of Oslo and Arkahus. You can see him there wearing the Norwegian national kit. Twelve meters seventy-two for Joel Vingeli in his second head-to-head. -head. That's the marker that the Norwegian will be chasing. And it is the Swiss athlete who takes the victory in that head-to-head, -head, his second head-to-head. 
a no throw for the Norwegian. Xavier Cruz looks to get ready for his throw. Meters 12 for uh, Javier Cruz in his second throw. As the Andorran athlete looks on. Hello, Vieira. Stepping into the circle. And here Cruz takes his second victory in these head-to-heads. Six meters fifty-five for Eloy Vieira. Dora. So six points for the host team. As we move back into group A. And the Norwegian athlete lays down the marker. 30 meters, 78. Eric half dancing Aspen. And it's a no throw for Thomas Prohaska. Of AK Skoda Pleasant, he will be very, very disappointed with that. There's a huge pressure on these young athletes. To get their best performances out in that single throw, you only get one throw against your rival in the head-to-heads. So three points for each. Eloy Viela of Andorra bettering his first throw as he faced with Dylan Clayden of Blackheath and Blee. In this head. Another big throw for Dylan Clayden. Maybe just slightly shy of the throw he put down in his first head-to-head. -head. Performances for the athlete who set this year. And that's a new he takes a sip of water, looks on. 15-59 for Dylan Clayden of Blackheath and Bromley. Over 15 meters, six strikes for Plaza de Castellón. Three for the British team. 
So right now, the local team players in the Castellón very, very well positioned to fight for the 12 points in the final round, which will be after the next race. So there are the results from that head-to-head. So as we draw our attention back to the track for, in the track for the points, our second right track now. event, the 110 meter hurdles for the women. in lane two, Shia Ruth of Oslo and Arcasus, personal best of 14.04 for TLV, next to her in three, Dorothy Vrydeker, Jody Self goes in lane four for Blackheath and Bromley. Victory Jansk goes in lane five of Pleasant, tall athlete towering over the, the local athlete to the side of her, Lerato Pages. So the ones to watch in our second track event Cassia Ruth in lane two, personal best of 14.04, representing Oslo and Arcasus. And Carmen Ferrara, the local athlete representing players. She's in lane six, personal best of 14.14, set this season. The athletes chasing 12 points team to get them into the best position they can be for them. And they're away. And it's a fairly even start. One of the athletes, the TLV athlete, pulling up. It is the tall figure, of Victoria Janske, currently driving away. She'll take the win and all 12 points. Jody Self, not far behind her. And those are 12 points, points go to AK Sko Pleasant. Big, big smile on the face of the Czech athlete there as she shakes her, the hands of her competitors. And now it's the team from the Czech Republic, Skolapinsi, scoring 12 more points in this 100 meter hurdles race. In 14.03. And it was a very even start. The TLV athlete you can just see pulling up, as did the local athlete from Pliers. And through those latter stages, Janska just managed to pull away from the athletes either side. coming through for second for Blackheath and Bromley. They've made a very, very strong start to the competition so far after winning the first track event. And Cassia Ruth of Oslo and Arcasus takes third place in the first three teams from today's event go through to the A final. But it is also worth adding that nothing is set until we get to the final event there you see the conf confirmation results from that second track event 
And those are the standings after 12 the 12 points to Pleasant, 10 points to Blackheath and Bromley. Blackheath and Bromley leading the competition with 22 points. And it is from Bromley after that brilliant start, who currently lead the way with 22 points. AK Skoda Pleasant just behind them. 22 points separating the top two clubs at the moment. This is the final round in the shot put, and now we have two athletes. As we go back to the shot put, for four or two points, Eloy Vilea from the Andorran team versus Joel Vingeli from Langasse Bern. So our fifth place head to head, Andorra versus TVL. Eloy Viela steps into the circle, he'll be the throw. As Joel Bengeli looks on. So it's the first That's throw the for of Eloy Bileya, the, athlete the Andorran the athlete. Around a similar mark it looks to what he's thrown before. To get four points. This is the final round. Two athletes pushing on, waiting for confirmation of that. 7.14 for, Seven meters 14 for the Andorran athlete. Can Joel Vingeli from the Langasse Bern team do? Who will get the four points? And it is Joel Vingeli's turn to step up. It's head to head. Fifth play playoff. This is the part of the fence that then secures the points for the team. And here's a clean throw for the Swiss athlete, who looks like he'll have done enough to take fifth place. So and there's confirmation that he has done 10 meters 79 for the athlete representing TVL. As we move on to our third playoff. And this is the duel for the eight or six points. Eric Aspen, the Norwegian athlete, versus Dylan Clayton from Blackheath and Brumley. Aspen with a clean throw to set the marker. Dylan Clayton will have to follow up. Eleven fifty-two. For Eric Aspen, the Norwegian athlete, and now it's the turn of the British from Blackheath and Brumley. And 52 Dylan for Eric Clayden, Aspen. For eight or well, Dylan Clayden has proved already in all of his head-to-heads that he's more than capable of that. But can he do it under the pressure of just having one final throw to secure more points for the team currently leading the way in the team standings? That is looking good for Dylan Clayden. And it is another very, very good throw for Dylan Clayden. He's really come so close to his personal best today. Can you see a replay there? Of his throw. I think he'll just be short of what he's thrown already today, but it will be more than enough to take the third place and the points that come with 14, that. 18, 14 so meters, 18 for, for Dylan Clayden of Blackheath and Bromley. Clayton. The British team take the points and the third place. 
as we move on to our first place playoff. Ch Thomas Prohas will be throwing first. He'll be slightly disappointed with the results that he's had so far. Hasn't really been able to get into the competition as such. But it is a big, big throw. He shakes his head. Score in this shot put competition. He did have the best pen, best by some way going into this competition. 16.73 for Hashka. That's the challenge for the Spanish champion for Javier Cruz. Well, he's laid down a marker there. Can Javier Cruz follow that? Nicolathi. Can he do it on home turf? You can see him psyching himself up. One throw for the opportunity to take all 12 for the home team. He needs to better the result of Thomas Prohaska. 16 meters, 7-3. And he won't have won't have enough on that throw. All 12 points. He steps out even as a no throw. And all 12 points go to the team from the Czech Republic. Thomas Bahashka finally with a, a bit of a smile on his face there. After we've seen him shaking his head a fair bit through the earlier stages of that competition. Gives his coach a, a fist bump, goes round and congratulates the other competitors. So this is the standing so far. Skolapin say team from the Czech Republic, first position, 32 points. But just two points ahead of the British team. And I expect the result will give us a bit of a, a shuffle up in the results for the standings so far. After three events, the overall team point stands. And there you can see Skoda, AK Skoda Pleasant have moved into the lead. There was only two points in them. We last checked in on the standings, and after that shot put up, they have taken the lead. Blackheath and Bromley, though, not far behind. They've put in a series of consistent results after their win in the opening track event in the 4x4. Four four. As we draw our attention back to the track, like we said earlier, this is fast, it's furious athletics. The whole competition take two, uh, two and a half hours. So the events incredibly quickly, considering we're only doing one event at a time. There's only ever one event going on in the stadium at one point. Luke Dronfield of Blackheath and Bromley. Yep. in this men's 110 meter hurdles. Thomas Koza goes in lane four, Ika Moreno in lane five. Polareros of Andorra in lane six. And Nicholas Baranyi Eriksson of Oslo and Arcasus in lane seven. He's one to watch in the Norwegian kit. Personal best of 14.49 set this season. He goes in seven, keep your eyes on him.
So they're cleanly away. And it is the Norwegian who has a very, very start. Also the Czech athlete going very, very well through these closing stages. Thomas, he'll be the one who takes all 12 points with that dip towards the line. Not far behind him, Ikemeno. The local side, Pius de Castellon. Increase. AK Skoda's lead at the top of the table. between Koza and Morani Eriksson through those opening stages, but he just pulled away through the last 50 meters. And he takes the win for AK Skoda Pleasant. Camareno of players coming through second season's best and Luke Dromfield like we said earlier picking up consistent points for Blackheath and Bright. So it's a tight fight between the Škoda team and the British team, but we still have a lot of competition ahead. Next in the track, we have the long jump, and it's the same deal as in the shot put. It's the same time of tricky competition because this is DNA athletics. This is not your average team international competition. So first, we have a preliminary round with uh, athletes battling themselves in duels to see who goes to the final round to fight for the 12 points, for the eight points, or for the lowest score possible, the four points. Next on the track, the long jump. So like we heard there from Albert, the long jump is up next, the same format we had for the shot putt and as we have for all our field events here in DNA. The athletes split into two groups and a round robin head to head between them before they go into a final point scoring playoff later on today. First up, Kaja Carlson Brown. Personal points of 5 meters 68. And that jump looks like it will be around the five meter mark. She's setting the marker, the Eleanor Corona. Of Plyas will have to. So five meters and 38 for Carlson Brown. Elena Kolea currently at the top of the runway. The local athlete from the host club. 
she has to better five meters 38. Which she's more than capable of doing a personal best five meters 82. And she starts her run up. Looks good on the board. Has she done enough? You can see the, the marker on the screen down by the side of the pit. And it does look slightly shy of the mark set down by Carlson Brown, who watches on from the side. And it is very, very slightly shy, just three centimeters in it. That's the kind of mark we're dealing with in this event. And Oslo and Arcasus take the first points from the first of the round robin head to heads. Katarina Samakova of AK Skoda Pleasant, team currently out in front. Claudia Baker will be the athlete having to follow her marker from Blackheath and Bromley. Five meters 57 is the marker that Claudia Baker will have to better to take the win in this second head-to-head. -head. The first for Group B. Be asking Baker to improve her personal best of five meters 37 do so. And that looked very, very close on the board. Comes out of the pit and that will be a no jump, a red flag for the British athlete. You can see her just receiving some instruction from her coach down by the side of the pit. The exciting thing about these DNA events. The coaches are allowed in the field of play. You're allowed one coach in the field of play for these field events. So they're right there and see those marginal gains, the things you need to change to make improvements. It is a one jump shootout most of the time between these athletes. And it's important for them to get the feedback. On to our set head to head in group A. Elena Correa. Very, very fast run up. She's so quick down the runway there. Look good on the board. Five to 32 for Elena Correa from the host side. And she gets a, a few words of advice from her coach. And you can look back down the runway. Carla Flinch of Andorra. She 
She'll have to have a huge jump to get near Elena Correa's marker. And unfortunately for the Andorran athlete, it won't be enough. So three spikes in the preliminary round in that second of the Group A heads-to-heads -heads goes to Elena Correa. As Claudia Baker takes the runway again. jump that will be a big jump for the black keith and bromley athlete the white flag is waved she looks very very happy with that one Five thirty for claudia baker just seven centimeters behind her personal best And it is Ossian Kachili, who we're seeing for the first time. Who will have to follow that market. And that looks like it could be a fairly close one. Is a victory for the Black Keith and Brock athlete. Can hear the cheers from the British team down to the side of me. I'll be delighted with that. So the third head-to-head -head of Group A. Carla Flinch on weight. This Andorran team, are a late entry into the competition. A lot of them will be doubling up over the course of the day, taking on multiple events. It is 90 for Carla Flinch. As we see Carson Brown at the top of the runway. She won her first head-to-head. Looks so, so strong down the runway. 
just a bit close on the board there and you can see flag has been waved. So Carla Flinch of Andorra there taking yeah. the three spikes. And this is exactly what DNA, you haven't got the longest jump on paper. Even if you're not necessarily a natural long jumper or high jumper or shot putter, getting that result on the board is exactly what matters because you never know when the bigger stars, when the, the athletes who regularly compete in this might falter. And that is a prime example. Great opportunity for Andorra. There's Cachilli. Back on the runway. And it is a clean jump for the Swiss athlete. Looks around the five meter mark from here. Hi, do you hear me? And the switch. Looks very, very, very happy with that. Five meters and 27 for TVL. It's Katerina Samakova, case go to players and back on the runway again. And it's, but it was close on the board. It gets the white flag, and that will be a big jump for the very smiley athlete from AK Skoda Pleasant. Her team currently leading the way in the standings. No point received from this round robin, but it does set you up for the opportunity to get points. And you can hear in the background the big cheers from the crowd here in Castellon. Six meters and seven centimeters. The AK Skoda Pleasant athlete, that is a huge jump from her. She'll be absolutely delighted with that. The challenge now is replicating that in the head to heads later on when they'll be vying for points, but that is a great sign for the club currently out in the lead. It will bring you the results from those head to heads from that round robin stage of the long jump in just a moment. We're not from 100 meters getting underway. And I'm joined by one of the athletes who was racing earlier, one of the local athletes, Lucia Gramahe. How was the race for you? You were in the four by 400 meters, the um, first race of the day. What was it like getting um, I was really nervous. I was like um, running at home. So all my friends and my family were here. So it was like, um, I was very um, confident. Yeah. But yes, the first race, it was um, like uh, something really important to me. So, <laughs> and you were third leg. Is there much? You know, we usually, we usually say there's a lot of pressure on the first leg and the fourth leg. Did you feel a lot of pressure being the third leg? Um, yeah, I, I have pressure because like the, um, the uh, 
it was like boys and girls. I didn't know if I was going to run with a girl or a boy, and I was like, any reference to follow. So yeah, it was pressure. <laughs> well, stay with us because we're about to watch the 800s women get underway. Ilaria Bells in the outside lane, lane seven for TVL. And you can hear the loud roar for your teammate there. We'll talk about her in just a second as we run through the rest of the lineup. You see Kvetkova goes in lane three. And Zaki in lane two for the 800 meters. The athlete's about to get underway. A big roar for the local athlete going in lane four. She has the fastest personal best in the field. So in the green vest. TVL in lane seven, Oslo and Arcasus in lane six, Andorra lane five, Plyas in lane four, Skoda Pleasant in three, and Blackheath and Bromley in lane two. The first 100 meters round in this 800 meters, and we'll look to take the break. See of Blackheath and Bromley in the lead at the moment. And they haven't really moved their way into that inside lane as such yet, as we see them do so as they go around that bottom back. This time, Zaki Amossi is still out in. And like we've seen before in these DNA events, it looks like this tactical race with the athletes out there. As the local athlete, <laughs> your teammate Lucia moving yeah. up in a very good position here, isn't she? She is. She is. On the shoulder of Zakia Mossi. As they come up to Tebel. bell. 73 seconds for the first 400 metres and this it will start to get a bit quicker. The pace will pick up as they head round in. Local athlete Andrea Rodriguez currently pushing the pace. Three meters to go, and Andrea Rodriguez to pull away. Willuka Pavekva on her shoulder. Zakia Mossi still well in the mix though. She led the start. And she's looking to get something back here. 200 meters to go, and this is where the pace really increases. It is the Spanish champion currently leading the way. 100 meters to go, and Zakia Mossi rallies once again. What a run for Zakia Mossi. She led the way early on. She dropped back, and now she has fought back through the stages. And it is the Black Keith and Bromley elite who will take the win. It did become a very, very tactical race in the end. And like we've mentioned so many times before these DNA events, it's not always the quickest athlete or the athlete with the best performance that will take the win. But that was still a very good race from your teammate down there. Yeah, uh, Andrea is one of, uh, is a really close friend of mine. And I'm really happy for her. Uh, she made a really good race, and I think tomorrow she's gonna she's gonna uh, do a really a really good one. Because that's something we haven't really spoken about yet. Is we've got the events today. But get yourself in a good position for the final because yeah. this is kind of like a semi-final. So even though she'd have the fastest personal best, is this a case of her maybe sitting back and saving herself a bit for tomorrow? I think uh, I think everything. Uh, she's a very um, clever girl that uh, in every race she prepares how she's going to make it. So I think, yeah, tomorrow it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it really well. <laughs> well, there you go. You heard it here first. Keep your eyes on her tomorrow. I'm sure yeah. we'll keep our eyes out for her on the stream. Thank you so much for joining us. Will we see you again racing tomorrow? Yeah. Amazing, we'll tomorrow. amazing. <laughs> Lucia, we'll, keep your, we'll keep our eyes out for you. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>
confirmation of those results from the 800 meter women. Zakia Mossi, what a race for her. A new season's best. And like we saw, it's not always the fastest times. And even though they the fastest, it definitely for an incredibly exciting race. Very, very tactical. Like we spoke about with Lucia there, is we'll see these athletes racing again tomorrow. So some of them may be saving themselves a little bit for the final. But to get into the final, you need the points on the team. You need to accumulate those points to make it into the A final. And the three teams currently through to that A final. Based off their performances, although that can all change in the hunt, you can see there at the top, Arcasus, Blackheath and Bromley, and AK Skoda Pleasant currently leading the way. Although, like we said, those points then get transferred into time differences for the final the hunt. A melee over 2,000 meters that takes place at the end of every single one of our DNA meets. So we're now into our playoff head-to-heads in the long. Carl Lynch, the Andorra athlete, in this fifth place. Three mead 92 for Carla Flinch of Andorra. And it's all about getting a marker on the board because you never know when the other athlete is going to slip up. Zoshian Chile, Swiss athlete. Just prepares herself at the top of the runway. TVL athlete being cheered on down the way. You can see a coach clapping there. Now it's a big jump. It would get the four, the four points, and it has been waved as a white flag. She's had a huge smile on her face throughout the course of the competition so far. <laughs> Five meters 13 gives the coach a little bit of a fist bump there. Doesn't look as smiley as she did before, but she secured the points for her team, and that is all that matters in this event. She can put her team in the best position possible for the hunt. Claudia Baker on the runway, Blackheath and Bromley. She'll be inspired after just seeing her teammate victory in the 800 meters. There's a big British contingent here cheering them on from the sidelines. She's up against Elena Correa of the host team. He also has big support here in Castillon. And it's a big jump from Baker, but it's very, very close on the board. Very close on the board there. And you can see the flag has up. So disappointment there for the Blackheath and Bromley athlete. She had a huge jump earlier in the competition. She's got lots to be proud of of her performance. But this is exactly what DNA is all about. These head-to-heads, the pressure is on for these young athletes. There's pressure to perform, as Lucia was telling us. But sometimes that's where we find the diamonds in sport. This is where we we'll find the future stars. And it's a different, it's a tactical way of competing. Something these athletes don't get to do so often. Clapping from the crowd as Elena Crayer takes the runway. She jumps 
And as long as she gets the white flag, she'll take the points in this third head-to-head. -head. In this playoff. Eight point go to Korea. Five meters and 11. Kaya Cassia Brown will jump first in this first place playoff. The opportunity to take 12 points, the maximum to your team. Kaya Cassia Brown representing Oslo and Arcus. She's on the runway. She looks so, so strong. Just behind the board. That's the jump board. The Norwegian gets the white flag. Looks down and it doesn't really give too much away. She did have a fair bit of space on the board. A bit of a smile as she talks to her coach there. 28 for Carson Brown. Katerina Samakova is up next. Can she replicate that six meter jump that she had in her head to head? If she does so, surely she'll take. All 12 points here. The crowd getting behind the AK Skido de Plezanathi. And it's another big jump. It's given the white flag. That was really, really close. Now the angles could be deceptive here, but it does look like it's on its way six meters. Six meters and six centimeters, another huge jump. The Samak of a of AK go to Pleasant. AK Skoda Pleasant picking up these big poles at the minute. So confirmation of the result from that long jump competition. All 12 points going to Skoda Pleasant. Oslo and Arcasus taking 10 points, and the local side players taking eight. And then the results after six events. Oda Pleasant starting to pull away there. Keith and Bromley not far behind, but that gap has opened in the last couple of events. And Oslo and Arcasus in third as it stands. Comes down to the final event, the hunt. Nothing is set until we get to that. So much can change over the course of a 2,000 meter mixed relay. And all these points that the athletes are amassing will be turned into time differentials for that final event. Three points equals one second, so the difference between the sides will be worked out, and then they'll be let off in order. 
of who has the most points working back down. As we get ready for the meter hurdles, Luke Dromfield, we saw him race earlier in the 110 ton hurdles. He's back for Blackheath and Bromley. One of the fastest in the in lane seven, he'll be one to watch. Oliver Freidiger of TVL in lane six. Sigurd Clementson in lane five. Eloy Viela representing Andorra. We saw him in the shot earlier. Like we said, a lot of these Andorran athletes doubling up. Luis Fernandez, one of the other fastest athletes in this field. And Wojtek Svan in lane two. So wants to watch Luke John Field in lane seven. And then the athlete there, you can see in the green, the local athlete, Luis Fernandez, going in lane three. He has the fastest personal best in the field and he'll have the local crowd behind him. So they're away cleanly and it is a fairly even start. The Spanish athlete just knocking down that first hurdle. And Clementson of Oslo and Arcasus running well. Dromfield side pulling away. And now Fernandez recovering from that early stumble. He's starting to work his way back up through the field. Fold. In just a moment, Luke Dronfield going very, very well. Sigurd Kremitsen as well in that Norway singlet going well. And it is Luke Dronfield through these last 100 metres. Luke Dronfield ahead of the TVL athlete, and then it'll be very close on the high line behind them. I think the Norwegian athlete, Sigurd Kremitsen, just took third place, but Luke Dronfield taking the win and all 12 points in a time of 54.10. The Spanish home favourite just struggling over that first barrier. He clipped it and struggled to get into his stride. He did himself a little bit too much work to and then through the closing stages, it was John who built up that advantage throughout the race. He just managed to hold on as the athletes behind him rallied on the line. We've been blessed with the weather here in Canada today. Slightly cloudy, not too much sun for the athletes to compete with. Perfect conditions for racing this morning. And we'll bring you the up-to-date standings after that event in just a moment. Alongside me now, Peter Doherty. Peter, how are you? You're one of the coaches for Retote, the Iris team, yeah. later on today. Um, are you out scouting down at the minute, seeing what it's all about? We're looking at the opposition here, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what's ahead. <laughs> We've got to compete with later on. Um, what do you think of DNA as a whole? I think it's a really good 
Um, I think we like the way it moves so fast. There's something going on, it's exciting. There's no breaks, there's always something to watch. So uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's really good. It's really good for the uh, younger athletes. It makes it more exciting for them. Um, we all know the issues with uh, the standard format is just, just a lot of breaks, just a lot of downtime. So, so this, this moves and uh, kids, kids love because it's quick, it moves on. It's the same as the phones. They want to boom, boom, move on, move on. Okay, so right now we have the same points for two teams, for the British and for the Czech team. But we are going to see who is the winner in the final hunt. Next event here in Castelló is the high jump. And this is going to be a very special high jump competition because the athletes, again, like in the shot put, like in the jumper, long jump, they are going to have duels. But they are going to hide the height they are going to choose for themselves. They are going to choose the height they are going to jump and they are going to hide it from their opponent and they are going to show it right before the competition. That is risky because someone might get cheeky and say, okay, one to jump one meter and 20, but the rival might jump a little bit higher and get the spikes and get the maximum points. So we are about to start a very special high jump competition. Alberto they're running through the format for the high jump and Peter one of the things that I think is really important for the athletes I'm sure you'll agree from your point of view as a coach is you know we mentioned earlier these athletes going off one at a time they've got the opportunity to really shine and what they do in their competition whereas sometimes we don't always see the field events really pushed into the limelight that's right uh, our field is, uh, are always saying that it just so much focus on the track athletes but as you say here, because it's done one after the other, everybody gets a uh, day in the sun. So it's, uh, it's really good. It puts more pressure on these guys also because they have to perform, I suppose, and the cameras are on them. So it's, uh, yeah, it's good. We can see now that the camera's absolutely huddled around the teams who are waiting to reveal their, yes, their yes, opening height, their heights, the yeah, height yeah. they'll jump in yeah. this duel. So as Alberto mentioned, the seats, as we we can see here from Pleasant and Andorra just waiting to reveal their heights. Same head to head format that we've seen in the field events throughout the morning so far. And they've been counted in to reveal their heights and they'll bin their iPads around. So the Pleasant athlete jumping 71. And the Andorra Nathi, it looks a little bit lower than that, although we'll wait for com confirmation. The light on the iPad, not completely ideal, 130. Wow. So okay. the pressure there falls to Pavel Fronik, the AK Skoda Pleasant athlete, to make it the height that he's gone for. Because if not, you'd imagine the Andorra Nathi, with that choice of height, has picked a height where he can get over it comfortably yes. and get that marker down on the board. Yes, it's a gamble, so you have to be careful. It is. A, I've, I've heard it described many a time as a bit of a poker game, high jump poker. High jump poker, yes. And it is the Andorran athlete who will jump first. Yeah, the lowest, the lowest height goes first. Yes. And there definitely is prep for these younger athletes, these under 20 athletes, with the, the whole stadium watching on, the focus is on there. The atmosphere, really, really good here in Castellon. The stands absolutely packed out for this first meet. And a little scissor kick there for Andorra and Athi, and he's clearly over, and now the pressure falls to the feet of the Roda Pleasant Athi, the Czech Athi who has to follow that. He's gone for a much higher height. He's asked for 177. 
well, 171, sorry. So Landa Tech's area, clear over 130. Pavel Fronek following that up for the chance to take all three spikes to put him in the best position for the playoff head to heads later on. This just the preliminary round. Ooh. Over. And he's clear over. And he takes the win in this first round, Robin, head to head. Peter, obviously, you talk to your athletes about this DNA meet a lot. How do they feel about this kind of format and the pressure that's put on them for these jumps? Yeah, we discussed it uh, before we came over, and uh, it's, it's all new to them. Uh, the Ireland competed in the Glasgow one uh, last year, so they were watching that. So they were they were interested, and they said, "Oh, this is something different." So uh, we we uh, explained the situation. There's going to be pressure, particularly in the field events. But uh, they, yeah, they seem to take it in their stride, and uh, they're really looking forward to it. So our next head to head. The athletes revealing their heights. 185 for the Norwegian athlete and 1 meter 70 for Barnaby Corey of Blackheath and Bromley. A bit of the uh, Harland about his look with the headband. Sorry? Sandra Yaren looks a bit like Harland with oh, the, yeah. his headband. Yes, yes. He's taking on that kind of look running around earlier yeah, and I had to yeah. do a bit of a double take. And it's a very quick start then into this. Mm -hmm. Next head to head, like we said, and like you've seen throughout the course of the morning, it's a really fast-paced event, just two and a half hours to get through all these events as the Blackheath and Bromley Assey just clatters up and that will be a no jump, so that will be a blank on the board and all Sandra Yarin has to do is get over his height, his slightly higher height of 180 and I guess this is where there's a bit of extra pressure when you've seen the athlete you're competing with, go head to head to, go over and knock the bar off on a lower height and you think, oh, if I would have yes. put mine a bit lower, yes. then I'd have had a, a bit of an easier run here. Whereas yeah, that's the, that's the problem. That's well, the, he's, the fixed, he's fixed his height, so he has to make it. He has to, yeah. And okay. he's clean over it. Excellent. Spikes go to Oslo Arkerson. A big thumbs up camera there from the Norwegian athlete. He's very, very happy with that. And now the attention goes back onto Group A of these head-to-heads. Andorra and TVL in this head-to-head. So 180 for TL and 135 for Andorra. 
Seen Lander Tex area go over four. We know he's capable of getting over this cleanly. And then the pressure goes Dylan Rice with that higher height. Lander Texera up, oh, another scissor kick and over. Very clean from the Andorran athlete. He knows that all he has to do is get over the bar. And then there is an opportunity for him to get points. We saw it in the long jump. It doesn't matter necessarily if you are not the fastest athlete or the have the, the longest jump as a past. And now the befalls onto Sylvain Reiser, the Swiss athlete. Chosen one meter eighty is his height. Ooh, and he's clean over that. So victory for Switzerland and TVL. Yeah, very, very clear over the bar for Sylvan Reiser. And as in field events we've already seen this morning, the coach is allowed in the field of play. You're allowed one coach in with the field of play. And it looks like he's just reviewing, going through some of the things that they've spoken about. He's got his sunglasses on there. Look almost like skiing glasses. <laughs> the sun's starting to peek out. The clouds clearing slightly. I think we'll have a bit more sun for the match this afternoon. So we see Barnaby Corey of Blackheath and Bromley back again. For the second head to head of Group B. So Barnaby Corey. One metre seventy-two. He increases the bar by one centimetre. And Edgar Clement of Pliers, one seventy-five. So not much. Just three centimetres separating the height on the bar. And it is the Blackheath and Bromley athlete. He just gets some final words from his coach and he works his way round to where he'll start his run up for head to head. Some big cheers there from the Black Heath and Bromley team. Very, very happy with that. Double high five from the coach. Clear over 172. Does Edgar Clement have to get over the slightly high height of 175? He starts back and on the opposite side to where Corey started. Go run up. For the local athlete, spring in his step, Ooh. and there goes the bar. And Barnaby Corey's gamble of the has paid off. He only increased bar by one centimeter, and it is played off. Edgar Clement not going clear of the slightly higher height of 175. And like we've seen multiple times already today, this is exactly where DNA comes down, isn't it, Peter? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think the hype is one of the most exciting events. It's, it's uh, as you say, it's a gamble, and uh, anything can happen. Anything can happen. The factor of having that dual 
not knowing who's going to jump here again back to group a one final time i saw sylvan rice tapping away at that ipad earlier so i wonder what height he's put in we're about to find out he goes up against pavel fronek of ak skoda pleasant And there we go. Even. Same hype. Same hype. Same hype by the looks of things. That's something we we haven't seen yet so far in this competition. You see the two athletes there. A little high five between them. One jump each. Pavel Fronet clear. Yeah, so there was a bit of an error with the numbers that we saw up on the big screen. Sylvian Rice going for the slightly higher height. Now, everything's... 26. And that did look a little bit closer to the bar than he was earlier, but he is over and he will do three spikes for TVL. So just one more head to head to go in this men's high jump before we look back to the track for the women's 100 meters. So the two athletes have made their choice and are about to move on. A little thumbs up from the Norway athlete there and a smile at his competitor. As so they flip the iPads around. So one meter ninety for the Norwegian, one seventy five for the local athlete. So 190 for the Norwegian. He'll be second, Sondra Yaren. He has no best of 1 meter 97. So he's not playing this safe. But it is the local Spanish athlete up front. He has to clear 175. Edgar Clement. Oh. And he's clear over. All clear over. And this is now where the pressure all falls to Sondri Aaron. He's gone for a big height. Just seven centimeters behind his personal best. He's looked so, so confident today. We 
Uh, going around, having a bit of a joke with the competitors around him. A little smile and thumbs up to Clement just before they revealed their heights. He's clearly very, very confident in this head-to-head. -head. Long run-up for the Norwegian. Oh, and he tickles the bar. He tickles the bar, but it's done. Punches his chest, raises his arm. That was so, so close for Sondra Yaren. That nearly went so wrong. Fell, almost fell into the arms of Edgar Clement, who was there just waiting for something like that to happen. And I'm sure Edgar Clement, he saw the way that bar rattled. Very, very excited for a minute that the points might go his way and to this, the way of the side. Oh, but that bar, good rattle. It, it more than rattled though, it did get, he gave it a fair, he clattered into it, gave it a bit of a bounce and it stayed on. So the results after seven events, Black Bromley back into the lead. It's been very, very close between the British side and Skoda Pleasant and they are back into the lead and this is another very good opportunity for Blackheath and Bromley to make more points some big points and maybe pull away a bit you can see just to the right of your picture there Faith Akinbeleji she has had an incredible season the Blackheath and Bromley She's one to watch in this. But we'll start. Naria Perez. The Plyers athlete goes in lane two. Carla Flinch, who we've seen plenty of times today. She's popped up a lot. The Sandorti, a lot of them doubling up. Isabella Indemort. Of Oslo and Arcasus goes in lane four. Lena Bulla of TVL, the Swiss athlete, goes in lane five. And there she is, the European under-18 from Black Keith and Bromley, Faith Akaji. Personal best of 11.7 seconds. She won her medal at the Europeans over the 200 meters. She set her personal best this season back in the UK at national championships. And I'm sure a lot of eyes will be on her. Victoria Janska in lane seven, just the outside of her. Her pop up a few times already today. The AK Skoda Pleasant athlete. But this is a big, big opportunity for Blackheath and Bromley to pick up some more points, extend their lead, make that advantage a little bit bigger for the hunt. It's so close to them and AK Skoda Pleasant. Eyes on lane two, Nayara Perez, very quick personal best, but also Faith Akinbeleji in lane six. And they're away cleanly. Akinbeleji, who's up very, very quickly and well into her running, and this is her race. Faith Akinbeleji of Blackheath and Bromley continuing her incredible season. 11.53. Well, we'll wait for confirmation of that. But what a result for Faith Akinbeleji. She has had an incredible season. She's had a long, long season as well. Competed in, she had a long indoor season, moved on to the outdoor. She high fives her coach there, screams of delight. We'll wait for confirmation of that time. She made it look easy. She's a, she's a very natural athlete. Really coming to her own this season. There's a big British contingent down to the left of us, and they're clapping and shouting down to her. Thumbs up. You can see the shock of the result there. She'll be very, very chuffed with that. It looks like she had a win behind her. But there we go. Personal best 12 points to Faith Akinbeleji. Victoria Janska in 
10 points. Very case go to play. And it is between these two sides. That two point we've seen it got a little bit bigger throughout the course of the day and it shrunk back to two two points again but it's Blackheath and Bromley currently with a slight advantage going into the as things stand at the minute we still have the 200 meters for the men and the high jump competition to tidy up as we cast our eyes back to high jump. And you can see the athletes there for the fifth place off. So we are slightly challenged there by the light on the we can see that the local athlete has gone for one meter 60, I believe. So one meter 60 for Egla Clement. Lander area Van Dora going for one meter 40. He's been increasing his height as the competition has gone on. Started at one meter 30 and has worked his way up. Not his main event, the high jump, but he's been making sure he's putting those markers down, getting clear. Because, like we saw early on in the competition, competitor take goes for a higher height and knocks the bar off. It falls right into your hands. The Andorran athlete opting for a shorter run. We've seen him scissor kick his way over the jumps in his round robin head to head. And he goes this time and is easily clear, gets the marker down. And now we wait to see if the local athlete, Edgar Clement, behind him. can meet the expectations of the pressure from having to clear this height on his home track. This for fifth place. <laughs> and the points associated in the third of our play.
So Barnaby Corey once again opting for a lower height, but we've seen this play's advantage already in the competition. Just goes through some full preparation, psychs himself up a bit. And he gives it a little bit of a wobble, just brushes over it. But Barnaby Corey is clear over one metre 70. And with only a two point difference in the team standings between these two athletes, respective clubs, this could be a very important matchup when we look at those standings at the end of the 11 events. Pavel Fronek knocks the bar down. Once again, not taking a risk has fallen into the hands of Barnaby Corey. Eight points to Blackheath and Bromley, and that could be very, very important when we look at the team standings. And you can see Pavel Fronek there, obviously very disappointed. He took the risk and it didn't pay off. And Barnaby Corey probably very, very happy that once again, things have fallen into his hands when it's come to the, the knocking the risk in this game of high jump poker. So our the Norwegian team opting for 195 and 191 for the Swiss. So a slight risk there for the Norwegian, who did more than tickle the bar when he went over in his last head-to-head. -head. He's taken a big risk once again. He's up to the bar height by five centimeters. So Swiss athlete goes clear in this first. Let's out a bit of a roar. Goes clear over 191. Blackheath and Bromley still in the lead, and that gap has opened slightly more than earlier between Skoda Pleasant, who trail behind.
Berg. You were in the 4x400 meters earlier on today. Yeah, right. How was that for you, Get, kicking off the event, you know, being in that first event of well, the day? Well, it felt great, you know, the first leg. Yeah. I, I chose that and, I mean, it was just incredible, you know, running here in Spain, my first time here. It's just well, uh, a cool. Everyone's so in nice, the, the weather. It's perfect, you know? Now we're going to go to the javelin throw. We're starting with the long throws here in Castello in Spain. Same deal as in the long jump or the short put. We have this preliminary duels and then we have a final round for them to fight for as much points as possible, as many points as possible. We have the javelin throw, then we have the 200 meters and then that's not enough for winning the competition. Then we will have the hunt. All those points that the teams have gathered through all the morning will be translated into seconds for this final medley relay for the hunt. Now we go with the javelin throw. Oh, you can just see your teammates down there. I think they've just been having a chat yeah, right with there. our colleague Mika, who's doing all the social media this weekend. How important is it to be here with your team, with your friends, with the, the athletes you compete with on well, a weekly basis? It's very good, you know. We have, we're like a big team, right? We we have known each other for a long time, and coming here together is like all the hard work we put into these sports. It uh, we we can uh, show it right now. And obviously, you sat next to me wearing your Norway singlet. Yeah. Um, you're not just representing your team are you you also feel like you're representing your country yeah of course it feels it feels the same you know it's it's not as big as a competition but it's still it feels as great as the world championship for me oh that that's so good to hear that's amazing to hear you just put a smile on all our faces here at dna yeah. i'm absolutely sure of that and uh, we've had some we've seen some great performances from your team so far sat in third in the mi at the minute obviously it all comes down to that final event the hunt and um, I'm sure you're all looking forward to getting back into the infield and cheering on the athletes and cheering on your team yeah. and actually being there in the mix. Huh? Being there in the mix for the hunt, you get to be in the infield and cheer on the athletes. Yeah, yeah that, that's so cool, you know, where I, like, I, I can see, I see the people in, in TB, uh, my old percussion war from Jacob Ingebrigtsen. Yeah. All these people I see them in TB, I feel like, wow, to be there, right? And now we are right here, you know, watching them, cheering to them, and it's so, it's so great. And we've just seen your, your teammate down there, Sondra Janssen. Yeah, he did um, very good. He did very good. Took a big risk in that last high jump. Yeah. It's, it's always a bit of a balance, isn't it? And I know you're a track athlete, but watching the field athletes, you know, I think you probably think there's a little bit of a, a pressure off on the track because you just have to go and run as fast as possible for them. Yeah. It's a bit more tactical, isn't it? Yeah, it's not the same, but it's still the same thing at the same time. And we were, we were noting earlier, I saw him from a distance earlier, and I had to do a double take because I thought he looked a bit like Erling Haaland. He's got yeah, a bit yeah, of the Haaland with the, about With the headband, with yeah, the headband. He is that like the him. look he's going for? Yeah, yeah, he's, um, <laughs> he's our Erling Haaland boss. <laughs> yeah. He's our Haaland. <laughs> Your Haaland representing the team today. Right, yeah. we'll get back to the javelin competition, and I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of the day yeah, with your team. thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye. So we've seen our first head-to-head -head go off for the women's javelin. There's our second athlete throwing from AK Skoda Pleasant. Petra Sokova. She's up against the local athlete, Eva Rodriguez. And it is Sokova and AK Skoda Pleasant who Take the first set of spikes. <laughs> Evelyn Cara there with her first throw. The Oslo and Arcasus athlete, 43-19. Scarlett lays down the marker for the Blackheath and Bromley athlete. And it's Peanut Meeking's turn to follow. Her team currently out in the front. of the team standings. That's 
and her team are very, very happy with that. You can hear the, the cheers down from the British team. Not quite enough to take the spikes from Scare. And here's the Norwegian. He'll take the spikes from that head to head. The next door is the next door is the two and so and Shishakova. Petra Sikakova then back up on the runway. And that, was and that is a big, big throw the, from, from the Czech, Republic. The Czech the athlete. Best well over 50 meters, so it's no surprise. She's got a personal best of 55.75. And that won't be more than that, but it is definitely the biggest throw we've seen so far. 47.84. You'd imagine she'll be key in AK Skoda Pleasant's attempts to close that points deficit they currently have behind Blackheath and Bromley. Aurora Caballo up next for Andorra. And Doran Athlete just goes and has a, a chat with her coach inside the field of play. Steps aside. And it is Sikakova who will take all the spikes from this second Group A head to head. And I mentioned it just a, a moment ago on the stream, Mika Moore has come up and joined us. You've been doing all the social media today, Mika, and out there we spotted you down with the Norwegian team when we were speaking to Emiliano just now. What's it been like out there? What's the atmosphere like actually down there in the, in the field of play? Oh, it's really exciting. The athletes are loving it. I was just talking to some athletes from Norway as well. Um, and they really like the atmosphere. They love being part of a team and earning points for their team. And the team atmosphere is so, so good. You can hear it, I'm sure, in a minute. We're not far away, obviously. You know, we've got the javelin on at the minute. We're not far away from seeing the men's 200 metres kick off. This stand is absolutely bouncing. The crowd in here are making so much noise and getting behind the athletes. You can hear just some claps in the background for Peanut Meekin. She has kicked off the second Group B head to head. A throw of 35 meters and six centimeters. And it's going to be a close one, but this might be the first victory for And Peanut Meekings takes the spikes in this head to head. The TBL athlete Nicole Jaramova. Black Heath and Brule. And the Norwegian team. Just struggling with that throw, and it's a no throw for her. And so Black Heath and Bromley taking the spikes from that second group B head to head. Adora and and Aurora Caballo for Andorra, just collecting her javelin and making her way back onto the runway. And she gets a clean throw in, as we've said so, so many times. And as we've seen 
a lot today, Mika. A lot of the athletes who haven't taken the big risks and haven't taken those risks in the competition, you know, we've seen with the high jump, going for the lower heights, or maybe just getting a clean jump in the long jump, have been rewarded by not taking risks when the athletes have maybe been a little bit more risky and taken those, those bigger risks and maybe tried to push their own personal bests have, have faltered. It's, uh, it's been really good to see today, hasn't it? Just that extra bit of spice in the competition. Yeah, that head-to-head -head element really adds an extra. I think the field events anyway, you always have that sort of feeling of, oh, are they going to get their jump in? Are they going to get their throw in? Are they going to get a red flag? But giving them that head-to-head, -head, it adds the intensity, doesn't it? So there is a bit more pressure on them, but it's really exciting to watch. And um, and you can see them all sort of calculating down there as yeah. well. Should I, go, should I go further? Should I go higher? I saw it earlier, especially with the high jump. I feel like the high jump is probably the the main event where we see with the duel, with that sort of poker style of jumping, where we see those athletes maybe trying to play mind games a little bit with the Norwegian athlete who uh, came second, was going around and doing a little bit of putting his thumbs up, nudging the athletes, giving them the eyes, maybe encouraging them to take a bit of a higher risk just in case his own jump doesn't play off. And the spikes in this third group A head-to-head -head go to the the local side, much to the delight of the crowd, Eva Rodriguez. As we see TLV back on the back on the runway, and is a clean throw for Nicole Jalimova of TVL. lays down a marker of 32 meters and 25 centimeters for Elevine Scar to follow. And that is a big, big throw from the Norwegian athlete. She has a personal best of 46-16. And that looks like it could have gone over that slightly. 46-52. So a new personal best there for the Norwegian athlete, who looks absolutely delighted with that as she high-fives her coach. So there are the results of the head-to-heads, the round robins from this women's javelin throw. And that is how the athletes will line up in the points round, the playoffs to come later on. As we look back down, to the track for the men's 200 meters. The next race, the, the 200, 200 meters. meters. You can see the camera focusing on Ariel Kwanu there of Blackheath and Bromley just before they flick back. He's the one to watch in this race. European under-20 champion in the 4 by 100 metres last year out in Tallinn. Arno Gomez of the local team players goes in lane 7. Andre Mika in lane 6 for AK Skoda Pleasant. And there he is, Gerald Kwanu. 
Humika, he's going to be the one to watch in this race, isn't he? Oh, yeah, most definitely. And I think, you know, he'll be feeding off the success that uh, Black and Bromley have already had today. Absolutely. Mark Hoffer next to him in lane four. Simon Nordheimberg goes in lane three for Oslo and Arcasus. And Harry Grass of Andorra in lane two. Blackheath and Bromley have done so, so well on the track so far today. And judging off personal bests alone, you'd imagine this will be another win for, for them. Kwanu with a personal best of 20.40. He's almost head and shoulders above the rest. It will depend on how far and how fast he wants to push things today, you'd imagine. And they're all away cleanly. And it is indeed a brilliant start for the Blackheath and Bromley athlete who is storming away. Not far behind him, though, AK Skoda Pleasant. Andre Mika doing very, very well as, as well. But it will be as he just eases up a bit towards the line. Blackheath and Bromley and Kwanu take it. 21.30. So outside his personal best, but he knew he was well ahead, Mika, didn't he? And you could tell as he approached the line, he just eased up slightly, looked a bit more relaxed. He has got to race tomorrow as well, and that's something that we've been told from the athletes who have, have come and sat in the seat you are today. They've said that that's in their mind as well, and they are thinking about that. They're not as much as... This is a semi-final and, you know, it is the same format exactly that we'll see in the finals. They're not seeing it as a standalone. They are mindful that they have to race again. And he knew he was head and shoulders well far ahead at this point and could just ease up. And like we've seen throughout the day as well, AK Skoda Pleasant and Blackheath and Bromley, they've been the two fighting for that top spot throughout. And all the points count, all the points add up. And that will become the advantage that the teams have in the hunt. The 12th and final event that we'll have today. And nothing is certain until the hunt. And this is something I want to talk about with you, Mika. Nothing is certain until we get to that point, until everyone is over the line in the hunt. We don't know who's won. And that's what's so exciting about this clash of clubs because everybody is fighting all the way to the finish. We're never going to know who's going to win until that finish line at the end of the hunt. And, um, you know, Blackheath and Bromley are giving themselves a really good chance going into that. As we said earlier, you know, uh, three points equals one second. So they're totting up all those points to get them a head start. But it's going to be an exciting race. It is indeed. And it is looking very, very close at the minute with the points very very close we've been sort of yo-yoing between no more than 10 points between Blackheath and Bromley and AK Skoda Pleasant and those margins aren't going to be huge and it's not going to be what we saw in Glasgow where there was a big gap and Spain went off well ahead and everyone was really fighting quite hard to get back up we can see the results now you can see the results on your screen the confirmation of those times from the 200 meters that we've just seen and the points allocated from that Blackheath and Bromley are now six points ahead of AK Skoda Pleasant. So that's a two-second head start. And I think that makes for a really exciting race. I think it does as well. I think it does as well because it's not too much that they can sit back and think, oh, you know, and get too complacent. AK Skoda Pleasant are going to be chasing them down, but they still have a fair bit of work to do. And the thing is with the relay like this, you're not sure what teams are going to put out there on the track. So it's not that you can sit back you've got to go all out from the start to the finish absolutely absolutely so we're not far off that final event the hunt and you can see on the screen who will be facing off for the places in our final head-to-heads now We've got our fifth place fifth place playoff in the javelin Andorra up against TVL.
So 11 meter 85 for Andorra. That's the marker that TVL will have to follow in the fight for this fifth place. Two more heads to heads to follow. And it's a white flag for the TVL athlete. And she will take the fifth place. And the points for TVL. Currently not fighting in that battle too much in the top three. But again, it all comes down to the hunt. No matter what position the teams are in, that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be the teams. The top three at the moment might not be the teams that qualify for the A final tomorrow from this semi final. And the bottom three teams might not be the three that make it into the B final. There's plenty of opportunity for some shuffling around during the hunt, which is fast approaching. All these athletes now. This is the last opportunities to gain much needed points for the hunt. As the Flyers athlete steps up, gets the white flag. And Rodriguez steps aside. She's done all she can. In this third place playoff. Twenty six meters fourteen is what Peanut Meekins has to better to take third place for Blackheath and Bromley. The team currently out in front. Much needed points for them to extend their lead, their advantage. And Meekings gets the white flag. That will be enough for Blackheath and Bromley to take the third place and the points that come with it. Eight points for Blackheath and Bromley. Elevine Scar then up first in this first place playoff. She lays down the marker. She's had some huge throws already today. Set a new personal best in her head to heads. Forty-three meters fourteen for the Norwegian athlete. And Petra Sikakova has to follow that. She has a personal best of well over fifty meters.
and she makes her way up the runway. And that is a big, big throw. From Sikakova. Forty-eight meters, forty-one. So twelve points for AK Skoda Pleasant, and it will be interesting to see how that then impacts the overall point standings. So Blackheath and Bromley still leading the way by only two points. Two points equate to just under a second. And this is where it gets really, really exciting for the hunt. So a very, very small advantage for Blackheath and Bromley as we go into the hunt. And that has been the story of the day, really. Blackheath and Bromley and AK Skoda Pleasant going back and forth at the top of the leaderboard. Oslo not hugely far behind, but it is so, so tight between those top two. And I'm joined by a Blackheath and Bromley athlete, Lara. Thank you for joining us thank up you. in the box. What has today been like seeing that really, really tight battle between Blackheath and Bromley, your club, and the Czech Republic side? Well, it's been terrifying, but also really, really exciting, especially as a spectator. You know, you really want your club to win, and like seeing all the hard work that's gone into this, it's really exciting to see it play out like this. So, just having a quick look at the time difference so it looks like there'll be 0 0.7 seconds of an advantage for Blackheath and Bromley and now you've got a very very strong, strong side in the heat and a, a team that can definitely chase how do you feel about your team being chased down uh, well I think that we've got a really strong lead with Morgan in the six at first so I think if anything she'll really hold it hold it for us but chasing wise I think my team can really pull it through and just not let them get too close. But if it does come close, I think we might have a little bit of an edge. That final race. All the points they've got are now translated into seconds of advantage for this final medley relay the first leg will be of 600 meters the second leg of 400 meters the third leg will be of 200 meters and the final one 800 meters now uh, the british team is in first position but only two points ahead of the team from the czech republic and that means that's going to be a very very close call in the start of this relay how do we know when they had to set off well we know it thank you to these lights the athletes in this hunt cannot step off until this light is green. Tomorrow in the finals, the winners of the hunt will be the new European champions. Today, the first teams will be in the final of tomorrow. So as it's just been explained there, the first three 
teams to finish the hunt will go into the A final. They'll be the first three teams to make it into the A finals. We've still got our second semi final coming up later on today. And then the last three teams will go into a B final tomorrow. So they still get the opportunity to race again. And you can see the lights down to the side of the athletes' feet. They'll have to keep their eyes on them. It's a bit like a motorsport start, the way yeah. you see the lights flash on and flash off and having to keep your eyes on that whilst getting mentally prepared to go and race, Lara. When these athletes are so used to hearing a gun to set them off, how does that mentality change and how do you have to... Could, have you had opportunity to practice this, these athletes? Are they prepared for this? Well, I know that we definitely have not ever practiced this sort of start at all, so I think Morgan will be happy to be starting first. But it's definitely going to be very different for these athletes to start with the light as you've got to really keep your eyes focused and also you don't want to false start because they're not going to tell you till the end that you've false started. Yeah. So even though they're going off at different times, we still have a traditional 800 meter stagger. So they will break down the back straight of the track. So Andorra going in lane six. TVL go in lane five, the Swiss team. And you can hear the roar there from the crowd. The local side, Players de Castillon go in lane four. Oslo Arcasus go in lane four, in lane three, sorry. And Skoda Pleasant, who have been in that battle with Blackheath and Bromley throughout the course of the day, from the off, go in lane two. And uh, is a very, very happy Morgan Squibb. Yeah. Ready to lead Blackheath and Bromley out. Morgan's had a really interesting season. She's proven herself over a variety of distances. And this is certainly something different for her as well now. She's got the adaptability. And she's certainly will have been inspired by watching the uh, Blackheath and Bromley athletes who have done so well before her. So green card just shown in front of the athletes as we pause for the start of the hunt. Disappointment already. Well, that is very, very tough to see. We mentioned it just before, didn't we, Lara? How these athletes are not used to this kind of start, and that is so, so hard to watch. The gun went off, Morgan Squibb was away, and it wasn't the time for AK Skoda Pleasant to go. But unfortunately, the athlete quite literally jumped the gun. She should have waited for the light, the light down to the side of them, as we see the athletes now set off behind them. And that is very, very hard for the AK Skoda Pleasant team who have worked so, so hard yeah. throughout today. There wasn't going to be much in it anyway. There was only going to be 0.7 of a second. 
but by the looks of things, there was a definitely a, a jolt, yeah. even if she didn't completely go. Morgan looks strong. But it though. is Mor really yeah, Morgan it. Squibb looking very, very strong. Like we said, she has had a very diverse season with yeah. the races she's done. She's a very good steeplechaser. That gives her races well on the flat. Yeah. So maybe this might be a little bit shorter for her, this 600 metres. But she's leading the way at the moment. Just 100 metres left for Morgan Squibb and Blackheath and Bromley. So 600 metres for the women. Morgan Squibb leading the way, followed by AK Skoda Pleasant. And next up, it will be the 400 metres for the men. AK Skoda Pleasant still fighting, but Blackheath and Bromley leading the way. But they are being chased down, the British team being chased down by AK Skoda Pleasant. And this is why it's called the hunt. This yeah. is exactly why it's called the hunt. Loads of these athletes will have done this kind of action in training where they're told to go yeah. and chase the athletes in front of them. The stagger is something these athletes will have done so much in training, but to actually compete and take that into competition is something different. You can see the AK Soda Pleasant athlete just tying up slightly before the handover. And they're over, they've handed over to the 200 meter leg and this is so, so yeah, tight, this Lara. this is very, very tight. I really hope we can catch this at the end, but it's, it's looking good. We're still not too far away and we're still within reach. Well, like it has been throughout the course of the day, it is between AK Skoda Pleasant and Blackheath and Bromley as Sam Reardon takes on the battle. Yeah. And this looks quite a controlled start for Sam. Yeah, I think he's really gonna play it, not safe, but he knows what he's doing and he believes in his abilities. Yeah, he's had a brilliant season, hasn't he? Yeah, amazing. And he can just latch onto the back now exactly. of the AK Skoda Pleasant athlete and sit there for as long as he wants, really. There's such a big gap between them and the, the Norwegian athlete yeah. currently chasing them down behind. I think it'll be very hard for the Norwegians to catch up. Yeah, just under 100 metres back, the Norwegians are currently yeah. sat. As we can see, the Andorran team as well, just on the home straight now, handing over to their final athlete. Sam looks very comfortable. Looking very strong, good stride length. <laughs> yeah, and Sam just moving round now. Just easing away. He is, yeah. He's so, it was always going to happen with a, an athlete of Sam's calibre, with the experience, the international experience he's had this summer, the races he's had this season. He's yeah. got the experience and he's got the, the tactical knowledge exactly. to sit on the back of the athlete, the Skoda Pleasant athlete behind. And you can see that all the teams in the infield now getting ready. Just you can see your teammates exactly. down there, Laura. I'm sorry we've got you up here. No, no. They but don't. they all look, and this is the thing today, Blackheath and Bromley, the support for the Brits has been absolutely yeah. incredible. As Sam Reardon comes into the home straight, oh. surrounded by his teammates. He loves it. He absolutely loves absolutely it. Absolutely loving it. He oh, crosses the line. Win. It's a brilliant win for Blackheath and Bronley. He hands his baton over and he was able to enjoy the last couple of metres of that, the last yeah. 10 metres or so, surrounded, having his team by the side of him. So Blackheath and Bromley win the hunt. Four minutes, 44.52. Now, you mentioned it earlier, Lara, about the fact that in this event, we don't know, uh, you won't know until the end if, a, if an athlete or team has been yeah. disqualified, so we'll have to wait to hear the fate of AK Skoda Pleasant with that jitter on the line from their first leg runner. It really is a shame. They had a fantastic competition, as you said. We've been going head to head with them, so I really hope it's not too much heartbreak. We've mentioned the pressure throughout the course of the day and 
throughout since the, the origin of this, this competition and this format, there's always been so much talk about the pressure on the athletes. Yeah, and that it absolutely shows. Yeah. Play Morgan going off for her first leg. A very, very strong run. Yeah, she did that super well. And then after that, she'd created such a lead that even though when they were chased down and, yeah. and caught up by the team from Pleasant, it was always going to be when it handed over to Sam. I feel it, yeah. it kind of fell into Blackheath and Bromley's hands. He's such a strong, confident runner, and the tactical knowledge he had to hold back as well. But I'm sure we'll come into its own tomorrow when he has to yeah. step up and, and do it all again. It's going to be very interesting. Very excited to see what happens. So we can just see on the big screen disappointment not only for AK Skoda Pleasant who have been disqualified but also the Andorra national team they've been disqualified as well I'm not sure their well start or why they've been disqualified was as obvious as what we saw from AK Skoda Pleasant but huge disappointment for the Czech team who worked so so hard battled throughout the course of the day to go up against Blackheath and Bromley. That's going to make the Spanish team very happy, though, now they've been pushed up into third. Absolutely. I was mentioning this, I think, just before you joined me in the, the commentary booth, Lara, that the first, because it all comes down to the hunt, it's not, all, it's not set in stone who's going to make it into the final. And even yeah. with those standings before, you might have said uh, Castellon weren't going to make it in, and now they've had the absolute delight that they'll be here in the later final tomorrow afternoon, competing in the A final. Yeah. And there you can hear the cheers as the, the, the stadium crowd, announcer. Very happy. They are very, very happy with that. The announcer, the in-stadium Spanish announcer, has just announced that players have made it in alongside the Norwegian team, Oslo and Arcasus, and of course, Blackheath and Bromley, who will be uh, the, the side and the club that everyone have got their eyes on now, yeah. especially with this being uh, the earlier competition, I'm sure. We saw some of the Retote coaches, the Irish team in here earlier, having a look around, yeah. eyeing up the competition if they make it into the A final. And it's brilliant to see the, the smiles on your teammates' faces, Lara. Yeah, definitely. Especially from up here. They look really good. <laughs> couple of little dances down there. <laughs> Coach calling everyone in for a bit of a team talk. So what will tonight look like for your team then? So obviously there you've got the advantage of being the earlier in the earlier meet in the first meet of the day. So chance to get back to the hotel maybe. Obviously they'll they'll go and warm down now. I'm yeah. sure there'll be some words from the coach. And then is it a case of resting up this afternoon, trying to switch off, or will there be some more analysis of how they can do a bit better tomorrow? Yeah, I think there'll definitely be a lot of resting. Maybe we'll be, if we're lucky enough, we can might maybe go down to the beach, but we'll also be doing some analyzing and seeing what we want to do for tomorrow, where we can put our best, so we can have our best foot forward. Yeah, because that's the thing. There's not, you look at this, this team have done exceptionally well, won the hunt by, a, well, about an 11 second margin and have shone throughout the day with individual performances as well. And for them, it's more the marginal gains, little bit of the, that kind of thing for your, your club. And I presume for a lot of the athletes, this will be one of their last, if not the last meet of the season. So like you say, going to the beach, an opportunity to enjoy it and enjoy being in, 
with your team before you all split off and do your, yeah. your winter training. Exactly. Yeah, it's definitely it's going to be one of the, the last, probably the last track race of the season. So seeing how happy they all look is it's very nice. So confirmation on your screen then of the results from the hunt. Delight for Blackheath and Bromley. Disappointment for AK Skoda Pleasant. And you can see Blackheath and Bromley take to the, the podium up there, which looks incredible. The setup here and the branding looks absolutely brilliant. You can see the, all the athletes there enjoying themselves. Yeah. They're encouraged to take their phones up with them. Photos, it really is share everything on social setup. media. Hopefully we'll get a cheer in as well. <laughs> Lots and lots of smiles. <laughs> and I'm sure they'll all be hoping that they can be back on that podium tomorrow. Definitely. Tomorrow afternoon. But for now, I'm sure we'll be celebrating this afternoon. So all the teams now just having an opportunity to go up and get some photos taken on the podium after our first of four DNA European under 20 club meets here in Castillon. The three teams going through to the A final tomorrow, Blackheath and Bromley, Oslo and Arcasus, and the local side, Players de Castillon. And we'll be back later on today, 5.30 Central European time, to find out who will be the other three sides joining them in that A final and the decider of which teams will be in the B final tomorrow morning. All the teams who've traveled out to Spain get the opportunity to race twice over the course of the two days. And we will be back at 7.30 Central European time, the second of our two semi-finals at the DNA European Under-20 Club Clubs clash here at Castellon.